Hello and welcome to the 16th part of my LEGO Scratch tutorial series for the LEGO Mindstorms Robot Inventor for Spike Prime and for the LEGO Mindstorms EV3. In this video we will talk about server conditions. In the past we had logical values which can be only true and false and that way we could make conditions that have to be met for something to, to continue to be triggered or something like that. In this video we will go a bit further because so far we only could use one condition for something, but now we will talk about several conditions. So basically, I've got two examples. The first one is a safe, and here I have to find the right combination. I have to move this to 4 into one direction, and then to 2 into the other direction. And now I can turn this and open this. And now I can get to my cheese. Otherwise, if I would have entered the wrong co uh, com combination, I couldn't move this log. So basically, I have to enter the correct combination. That's the first thing. And I also have to turn this wheel at the right combination. That's the second thing, and only if I do both things at the same time, I can open this door. Another example would be an animal, because there you might want to react if you pet it, or you might want that it reacts in another way if you feed it, but maybe you want it to react in a third way if you feed it and pet it at the same time, and for that you want to have both conditions met at the same time as well. And for this example, we will only use this hub because that's enough for this example. But now let's start. We've got normal conditions where we can ask something, but we want to ask two things. So we can not only ask if the left button is pressed, but also if the right button is pressed. But we will have to connect these blocks somehow because now we can only ask this or that. And to connect them we can use the operators and here we can use AND. We can input one block into one input and the other block into the other input. And now we check if the left and the right button is pressed at the same time and this whole block is only true if both of them are true at the same time, both inputs. Now we can put this into wait block we can wait until both conditions are met and then we can continue. And now for the safe example, we can show a log if this condition is not met. So normally the safe is locked. But if we enter the correct combination, and in this case we press both buttons at the same time, then we want the save to unlock. We can show an open lock. This might not be the prettiest lock that you've ever seen, but I think that it gets the point across. So let's try it out. Currently the program is locked. I can press both buttons after another, nothing will happen. Only if I press both at the same time, the code unlocks. So that's basically what we wanted to do. There are other things we can do. We can also check if something is not met. So we can check if uh, both are not pressed at the same time. But that wouldn't make uh, sense because that's the default state. So this basically inverts it. If the input is true, then the whole thing is false. And if the input is false, then the whole thing is true. That's what not does. And we've also got OR. That doesn't make much sense for a save, but there are other cases where it makes sense. And here we can check if the left button or the right button is pressed. And we can try it out as well. In this case, it's locked until I press either that button 
or that button. And normally it works with both of them at the same time as well. That's basically and, or, and not. You can ask me questions, but I've got one more thing uh, to show you. But if you didn't understand something until now, feel free to ask me questions. Now, if you want to make a save, a save, then you want to make a reel that you can spin, just like the real save. Here, you've got a reel, and that has to be at the correct position. For this set, you've also got a wheel, or not a wheel, but a motto, where you can check the position. And maybe you want to use that as a condition instead of both buttons, or one of both of the buttons. You can do that as well, but that's a bit more complicated. You might not understand it completely, but this is basically how you would do it. So basically, you want to check the position of the motor. In this case, I wanted to check if it's turned for half a rotation, 180 degrees. Basically, if this is 180, if the motor is at position 180, this whole block will be zero. And then we make the absolute value of that. Basically, if it's below zero, then we make the minus, then we take the minus away. We simply erase it so that it's a positive value. And if it's a positive value, it stays positive. This basically makes a negative or a positive value the positive one by taking the sign away if it's negative. And then we check if the whole thing is below 45. So basically, we want to check if this position is 180. Now, if it's a bit below 180, then it would be negative because 170 minus 180 would be minus 10. And to make sure that this doesn't make a problem, we can calculate the absolute position. And then we got 10. And then we check if that's below 45. We don't have to meet the complete correct point. We only have to be in the area by 45. You can change this value if you want to be more precise to 10 or to 5 but you might not uh, trigger the, the correct position if it's too low. And you can change this value if you want another position. But keep in mind that if you turned a full degree or a full rotation, then there's a point where it switches from 360 to zero. And you, won't, you don't want to get this, that point, so this should be away from 360 degrees. But that's basically how this block works. Uh, if you didn't understand it, feel free to ask me questions. And you can use both of them as an input. And only then unlock the lock. Of course, you could make a second wheel because you've got more than one motor in your set. You could simply copy this. Maybe check if it's 90 degrees. And then you could ask if both of them are true at the same time. You could put input them into an end block. And now you've got this giant thing. And you can add more combinations if you want. Basically, all of these three values have to be true now. But that was it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching. I hope that you've learned something. Also, if you make something with my programming tutorial, please tell me in the comments if you made some special program or something. It would be cool to check out if you've got, a, or if any of my viewers made some cool project, thanks to the tutorial. But thanks for watching for now. See you in the next video and bye.